Hi folks, thank you for tuning in for another review. Uh, today I'm going to be looking at the Leatherman Skeletool CX. And uh, let me just say, if you hear a lot of noise in the background, it is super windy today. I woke up this morning and uh, headed out for work and it was kind of rainy. Then it started roaring on the freeway. I uh, got to the office, they sent me back home, because we typically don't work if it's raining really bad. And uh, now the rain has given way to uh, a lot of wind. So everything outside the house is blowing around, the neighbor's dogs are going crazy. So if you hear some background noise, that's likely what it is. Uh, anyway, let's get back to the review here. Uh, looking at the Leatherman Skeletool CX that you see before you. Uh, a pretty great tool, I'm really happy with it. This has probably been, thus far in my experience with all of the different Leatherman tools that I've owned and carried and tried, this one's probably been one of the most comfortable to carry. And for me, that's a big deal. But it still offers you a reasonably uh, variable set of tools. And I'll get into that in a moment. So it's not quite as diverse as a lot of the other Leatherman tools you're used to. But I think it offers a lot in a small package that's really comfortable to carry. So let me go over let, some of the specs like usual. And then I'll get into a little bit more detail on my own thoughts about it. This actually does come with a variation. There is another version. Uh, which you could consider to be the standard model, whereas uh, this one is in fact, as I mentioned, the Skeletool CX. The other model is just the Skeletool, uh, just sort of a standard model. Uh, instead of this darker finish that you see on the handles here, it's just a stainless steel, just a standard stainless finish on the other model. And you'll see this little insert of carbon fiber, this little fin that runs along here. And uh, on the other version, that's going to be made from aluminum, I believe. I don't own that model. I've never used it. Uh, this is actually my first experience with the Skeletool, was my ownership of this model. So uh, I can't give you any real specifics on the, uh, the weight and the carry of that other one. I believe it's really similar to this one, other than, again, uh, the, the overall finish. It's got an aluminum liner here, and the blade is made from a 420HC steel instead of the 154CM that you see on here. So I bought this uh, used in like new condition a couple months ago, and I've been carrying it almost every day ever since. Um, I was carrying the Juice S2 that you saw in a previous review, and when I picked this one up, I swapped it out, and I've been carrying this one almost exclusively since then, uh, just to really put it through its paces and give a good, uh, thorough, and honest review. Uh, so, like I mentioned, the tool set on here can be quite diverse, and that's due to the uh, Leatherman bit driver that you see at the end here. You can swap that out and put various bits. But other than that tool, it's pretty limited in what it's got. Um, now if you go to what Leatherman's website, I think they'll say it has seven in one, seven functions. And uh, that's you know pretty typical of Leatherman. They like to mention all the different types of pliers available. So you have your needle nose pliers, standard pliers with the little teeth in the middle, and then your hard wire cutters. And uh, or I guess they're wire cutters, and then right in the very middle, you see where those curves are. That would be your hard wire cutters, I believe. I don't know. I, I just kind of call this pliers. So to me, this is one tool with a few different functions. Sure, it's got wire cutters, but you know, I don't. In my mind, I don't normally list those off to myself when I'm trying to decide how many tools this this has with it. Uh, and then in addition to that, you've got a really great one hand opening knife blade, which is one of the real standout features for this tool. And that is a liner lock, or a frame lock, depending on your definition. You can see there, so that it won't close on itself, at least uh, not with any moderate pressure that I've experienced. And uh, closes one-handed also, which is really great. And then in addition to that, uh, you know, pliers, knife, uh, you have the bit driver, as I mentioned before. Uh, this uses Leatherman's little thin, almost flat bits. And you can actually purchase a kit from Leatherman uh, that'll give you several different types of drivers, Phillips, slotted, Torx, um, there's a few other variations, uh, uh, hex drivers, and some other stuff that I hadn't seen before. Um, so what's kind of cool about that is that you get one uh, bit that fits in the end at all times, and it's in there even when the tool's closed. And then in the opposite handle here, and you can see it's got sort of a little depression for your nail to slip in, um, you've got a second bit, so you can carry a second bit with uh, a couple more options on it. So maybe you don't need a slotted driver, you pick up that bit kit from Leatherman and you could put something else. Maybe you always use Torx drivers or you always use a certain hex driver. You know, maybe something that's uh, 
specific to you know a bicycle or a motorcycle or whatever your job is that you might carry this for. So I think it's kind of cool that to offer you a little bit of versatility like that. And then finally, one of the most uh, obvious standout features on the Skeletool and the Skeletool CX is this uh, really great fold over carabiner clip at the end. It's got a really strong springy gate clip and uh, this doubles and you kind of see the image there in the end. This doubles as a bottle opener so you can actually slip this under a bottle cap and pry it up and uh, it works well. I've only used it a couple times but it works fine. I don't know that I'd want to spend all day opening bottles using this specifically but it'll definitely remove bottles or excuse me remove caps from bottles uh, with relative ease. I can hear that. I don't know if you can hear that on the video, but the wind is whistling out there now. Um, so those are pretty much all the tools. I mean, that's that's about it. You know, it doesn't have uh, a large variety of drivers. Uh, you know, there's no corkscrew, there's no files, there's no saw. So pretty basic. But I, it's actually one of the things I rather like about this tool because all of the tools that it does include perform well, and they do pretty much exactly what I want them to do with uh, very few downsides. There are a couple, and I'll mention them. Uh, but overall, I do want to say that it works great. Uh, it does have that one-handed opening blade, as I mentioned, that is 154 cm steel and is flat ground. Uh, so it's actually quite, uh, you know, up there in steel. It's fairly premium, and uh, it, it should offer you a good, long-lasting edge. Uh, I know that in, typically, on average, Leatherman uses a really good heat treat on their steel, and I don't notice them to be overly brittle or overly soft. Uh, the thickness of the overall tool is about 5 eighths of an inch thick, a little bit over a half inch thick, and then at its widest point, which is where the clip rises up there, uh, and, and uh, these uh, pivots at the ends, you're looking at a little bit closer to 3 quarters of an inch thick, so not terribly thick when compared to other tools, but not the thinnest. It's going to be thicker than you know most knives or uh, maybe your average uh, slimmer Swiss Army knife, something of that nature. Overall length is just shy of four and a quarter inches long when closed and that's about average with most of the pocket size Leatherman tools and the weight is five ounces which actually makes it uh, one of the lighter Leatherman tools at least as far as you know offering full size functionality rather than comparing it to something like the Squirt or the Style PS or something like that uh, this one for its size is actually quite lightweight as I mentioned the handle materials are stainless steel and a little bit of carbon fiber and that little insert. I think it's fairly attractive. I like the design. I think it's really cool and flowing and uh, I like that it's a bit more daring than most of the other multi-tools that you'll see out on the market now. It doesn't really have much texturing to speak of but it does have a lot of milled out holes and obviously you can see those running through the body. Those are very likely there to uh, lower the weight but they also do kind of give it some grip. So if you're holding your hand, if your hands wet or greasy, oily, um, the tool is going to stay in your hand pretty well. So that's, uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, as far as comfort, I think it's pretty darn comfortable. You can see it's obviously got a weird design once it's opened up. And for some people, that's going to be a problem. The only thing that I will say is that my hand has a, a slight tendency to want to slip forward. You know, it kind of wants to come up. Uh, but, it, but it's not much. I tend to hold the pliers in my hand in this fashion. And one of the things I was worried about, as you can see right there, the uh, driver tip is kind of in the meat of my hand but in my experience when I go to grip it might look like it's pushing down but it's not I'm actually holding it against the side and it's not that uncomfortable now uh, having said that if I if this was a tool that I was going to carry all the time and use constantly day in and day out I would probably go for something with uh, more you know a more standard design something that wasn't quite as curved and something that offered a little bit more comfortable I would not say this is uncomfortable but as it is a little bit unique and it is a little bit different, um, it, it's not going to sit well in everyone's hand the same. And I have about medium to large hands. If you had extraordinarily large hands, that driver bit at the bottom might be a problem. Obviously, you can unlock the bit and remove it, and that does lock. It's got a little lever on the back there that you depress to release the bit. Uh, so you can unlock it and remove it, but I don't know how many people are going to want to remove the bit every time they go to use the pliers, you know, quickly. So. Something to keep in mind, sort of a downside, but not, you know, not seriously bad. Uh, the other thing is when using the screwdriver, uh, again, you can see that the shape is not very uniform from one end to the other. So it's got sort of a weird sort of off-center spin to it. But again, with occasional use, you're probably never going to notice this. I mean, if, as long as you're not tightening screws all day long, 
I doubt it's going to bother anyone. I've gone online and read people, read uh, you know, posts from folks on forums and read reviews online where people have mentioned that they thought that was uncomfortable. Some other people said they never notice it. Uh, I kind of rest in both camps. It's again, if I was going to use this tool constantly throughout the day, I would pick something else that was maybe a little bit more streamlined from one to the other if I was going to be using the driver often. But for me, not a big issue, and uh, I've been really happy with it. Uh, it does have a, actually, I don't want to say a lanyard hole. It has several options for a lanyard hole. Um, you can see one small one at the top there where you could add a key ring. I've obviously uh, run a length of paracord through this largest loop at the back, and then you've got another one right here just below the uh, base of the clip. So you have several options for adding a loop. You could also just put your lanyard loop right through the carabiner clip and then of course the clip itself uh, adding a lot of functionality and a lot of carry options you could clip it to a backpack clip it to your belt loop uh, you know a purse a jacket uh, any of your gear I'm sure if you've uh, if you've got one of these on hand you'll find something that you can clip this to having said that I don't use the clip myself um, I just mostly use this as a bottle opener but I do like the look of it and I like the option if I ever do uh, decide to take this with me and I've got my backpack and I'm out camping uh, it's a nice little option to be able to just kind of clip it on real quick onto one of the loops on my backpack and away you go. And in addition to that, we have a really slim but wonderful pocket clip. And I like the design. I like the depth, the length of it. It's, uh, it's quite long so the tool doesn't want to push out of your pocket. It sits with about a half an inch sticking up above your pocket. For me, it has not been a problem. It is comfortable and carries fine in my front pocket, but I actually put this in my left rear pocket opposite my wallet and I let the lanyard kind of hang out the top of my pocket if I want to retrieve it I just pull on the lanyard and that kind of unclips it and away I go so definitely lots of carry options very comfortable and I think that's one of the coolest aspects of the skeletal is you can find some comfortable way to bring it with you at all times uh, as far as the overall construction the overall you know fit and finish all of that fantastic uh, strength has been great so far. There were some issues I'd read online with some people uh, having the tips of the pliers break. And I'm not sure if that has to do with the age of the tool or not. I've heard from uh, some you know, various reports online that Leatherman has uh, improved the tips on the pliers and that shouldn't be a problem anymore. I have not experienced that. I haven't used them on incredibly tough tasks, but in all my use, I've never had any worries about the strength of the tips on the pliers and if there were any issues of course Leatherman has a wonderful 25 year warranty and they would definitely be taking care of it for me. I'm confident in that. So that's not going to be a problem and in my experience hasn't been a problem whatsoever. Uh, no wiggle, no wobble, no play. Everything is super tight and snappy. This is actually one of the tightest tools I've ever received and uh, I mean it's really stiff but I actually like that. I don't like when multi-tools and you open them up and there's a lot of slop in the pliers or in the handles. Uh, this one hasn't had any of that. It's just been really laser precise and really strong. And overall, I think it's just going to last for years and years. Uh, with few features, it can be a little bit limited in its use, but it is overall performance has been really, really excellent. And uh, so that's, you know, I, I know I keep mentioning that as far as its limited use, but I just want to remind you when you when you go to purchase this, just keep in mind it doesn't have as many tools as you might find on some other multi-tools. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy with Leatherman overall. I own a lot of their products. I've owned them for years. And I like that Leatherman seems to always kind of innovate. They're always kind of looking for something new, something interesting, uh, and, and making you know small little changes throughout their lineup over the years, but in, a, in an interesting and in a forward-thinking way. And I think that's kind of cool. And I think that the Skeletool kind of speaks toward that, if you get what I'm saying. And uh, the other thing is, again, their, their warranty. And I've never had to use it myself, but I've read numerous uh, folks uh, posts and reports online from folks who have used the warranty, and every last one of them has been 100% satisfied. So in my mind, Leatherman gets high marks there. So let me go over my pros and cons real quick. The pros are that it's light, it's comfortable to carry, it's very versatile in all its different carrying options, and I do love the carabiner, although I don't really use it myself. I think it's a really cool addition to a multi-tool. Uh, it's compact. You know, it's not too bulky. I think it's definitely built very rugged, and I think that they use some really great high-quality materials in here, especially with that 154 cm blade. All the tools function well, and uh, it comes from a great company with a rock-solid warranty that's going to last you a quarter of a century, and I don't know that you can ask for too much more. 
Uh, it's got a cool design and it really shows me that Leatherman, you know, isn't content to rest on their laurels. They're, they're wanting to show you something new and give you some exciting and innovative designs. And uh, I think that's really cool. Now, as far as the cons, I don't have very many and they're really, it comes back to that limited tool set that I keep mentioning and possible comfort issues with the pliers and potentially the screwdriver for some folks. If you're one of those guys that uses your multi-tool all day long, constantly, I would probably go for a different model. Occasional use, but you need some good, strong, uh, basic tools at hand all the time. I, there aren't too many choices that I would actually recommend over the Skeletal. I think it's just that great. Uh, general price that you're going to pay is about $60 to $70. It seems to have come down in price online recently. It seemed like it was a little bit closer to you know 70 to 80 and now it's come down a bit which I think is cool making it a little bit more accessible for folks. And as far as the overall value I think it's going to just depend on your needs and, and your expectations. Uh, for me it's become a favorite. You know I like that it's a limited but focused tool set and it takes up a really small footprint in my pocket. I actually will keep this in my bottom left or back of my left pocket like I mentioned and then keep something small at the bottom of the pocket, something like the Squirt P4 or the Leatherman style PS. So it kind of gives me a little bit of room in the same pocket to still carry something else for even more options and I think that's kind of cool. Um, the carabiner clip is definitely going to be a huge boon for certain people. If you've got a backpack or if you've got, you're carrying certain gear, I think it's going to open up a lot of carrying options and I think that's going to definitely be appealing. If you like the design but the price of this one seems too high, then definitely check out the standard Skeletool because again, for about 10 to 15 bucks less, uh, your only sacrifices are you're going to miss out on the carbon fiber scale, which isn't really that big of a deal, and you'll be bumped down from 154 cm blade steel to uh, 420 HC. Oh, one thing I should mention though is that if you do go over the standard model, instead of having the uh, plain edge that you see here, as far as I know, all of the current standard Skeletool models have a partially serrated blade. So if you want just a plain edge blade, you kind of have to go for the Skeletool CX. And I guess that wasn't always the case. In fact, I think those options were reversed in the past when these first when these tools first came on the market a few years ago. The CX had the partially serrated blade and the standard model had the plane. I'm not really sure why Leatherman flipped it, but something to keep in mind as you're out there shopping, if you decide to buy one used, uh, you might be able to find that standard model with the plane edge for you know even less money. So uh other than that, I think that uh, I think I mentioned everything. Tremendous value, really cool tool. Let's do a couple quick comparisons uh, while I'm going on way too long, like I like to do, and I'll just show you some size comparisons to some other Leatherman tools that I carry. Um, here's a Leatherman Wave. You can see that uh, you know just in from the side in profile, they're uh, they're not too much different in size. The Leatherman Wave is a little bit bulkier, you know, from left to right. Uh, from the side, you can see the Leatherman is quite, a, or excuse me, the wave is quite a bit chunkier overall. And we're talking five ounces here, eight and a half ounces on the wave, so uh, pretty considerable weight difference. And uh, despite the pocket clip that you see on here, I do not pocket carry the wave. I think this thing is absolutely monstrous. It stays in my work bag, gets thrown in my backpack on occasion if I'm out hiking or camping. But um, it, again, it, if you can carry this in your pocket, awesome for me this five ounce model with its slimmer design is definitely going to be the way to go. Uh, so there's the wave. Oh, and let me show you the pliers too while I'm at it. While we're sitting here and the minutes are ticking away. Larger pliers on the wave and definitely thicker. And while I'm showing off the pliers I'm going to grab my Juice S2 which I reviewed recently and we'll look at the pliers there. Now these are going to be really similar, a little bit bigger on the Skeletool and almost identical in thickness if not identical in thickness and then let's close those up and I'll show you another size comparison there and if you can't tell I really do love Leatherman tools I think that they're a really cool company that stands behind their product pretty much similar in thickness a little bit longer on the Skeletool um, I do like the S2 and I think it's great for pocket carry. I kind of wish it came with a built-in clip, and I may add an aftermarket clip to it at some point. Uh, but that clip on the Skeletool is what makes it win out between the two. So they've got definitely different tool sets, but the uh, Skeletool is just a little bit more comfortable to carry with that pocket clip and that same you know, overall slim uh, size. So that's those two. And let's see. Here you go with a Victorinox Swiss Army Tinker. A little bit bigger, a little bit thicker, 
definitely weighs more. Um, I think that's probably enough comparisons for you folks. You guys get it. This has gone on too long, like always. Uh, the Leatherman Skeletool CX, wonderful tool. Uh, pretty basic in what it offers, but I think for some of you folks, that's all you're going to need. I have found in my experience, it's pretty much all I need, so I've been happy with it. So another great, great multi-tool from Leatherman. If you get the chance and you're interested, definitely do check it out. I think you'll be happy. So again, thank you for coming along for the ride. I hope you enjoyed this review and found it informative, and I hope to bring you another one really soon. Bye.